from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Susan Grainley, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes. Uh, how are you, Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wil... There's somebody there with you. Yes, that's entirely correct. Well, just listen, then. It's all fixed, Mr. Dollar. Grandmother's expecting you. She'll be alone for the next few hours, so come on out to the ranch. You're certain of that statement, I suppose. Yes, of course. Uncle Walter went into Vegas, and Aunt Hilda's gone somewhere, too. Yes, I'm quite aware of that. Do you mean she's there? With you? That's right. Oh, Mr. Dollar, you men are all alike, aren't you? That's quite a remark for a person your age, Mr. Wilson. Oh, I'm quite mature for 16. Has she made her pitch yet? I think we'd better postpone this discussion until the next time we meet. Well, she always does, you know. She's a regular vampire... I figure Uncle Walter's going to kill her someday. Not Mr. Wilson. Any... Yes, sir. Goodbye. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Las Vegas, Nevada, to the home office, Amercon Northern Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the matter of reasonable doubt. Expense account continued. (laughs) Item nine, a half a buck, tip to the hotel bell captain to call a taxi for Hilda Gramley and to wave goodbye to her as she drove away. I do not include the six brandy she guzzled. Those were on me. Of course, she had knocked on my door uninvited, so that made it her party. But still, it was my room, so that made her my guest, so... Ah, forget it. The whole thing left me too confused to itemize it. She'd obviously come on a fishing expedition. The fish, information. Bait, the usual, but nicely designed. Results, none on either side. What had started out as a trust case had turned into a snipe hunt. I was in over my head, floundering, and I needed some good, buoyant answers. I was hoping Mrs. Gramley herself could supply a few of them. I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Dollar. Sit down. She wasn't young, and she wasn't beautiful anymore, but she had been once. She still had some of that assurance and authority that beauty always gives a woman. She seemed a little uncertain, a little harried, maybe, but underneath it, just as tough as an old field boot. I think you'd better leave us alone now, Susan. Okay, Gran. If she starts using her brass knucks, give a whistle, Mr. Dollar. I'll rush in and save you. Thanks. I'll remember. Oh, she's a brash little flippity gibbet. And you love the dickens out of her, don't you? Love? (laughs) Yes, I do love the dickens out of her, Mr. Dollar. Is that what you came out here to find out? No, I knew that already. Otherwise, you wouldn't have wanted to transfer all your holdings to her. How did you know about that? Just who the devil are you, anyway? Seems to me Susan was pretty vague on that score. She had to be. She doesn't know. Then why did she think I ought to see you? Oh, she decided I looked honest. Claims she's got a knack for that sort of thing. As a matter of fact, she has. And also, she loved her father and mother. What do you mean by that? Mrs. Gramley, I'm here because your friend, Jonas Parks of the Flint Rock Bank, sent for me. What? I'm a special investigator for the Amicron Northern Trust Company of Hartford, Connecticut. Why, well, Jonas didn't say anything to me. He hasn't had a chance. He intended to when he was here this afternoon, but you were too ill to see him. Ill? I didn't even know he was here. Your nephew and his wife did. He talked to them. Tell me, Mr. Dollar, just why did Jonas send for you? Because he thought you might be losing your mind. Oh, he did, did he? Huh. Are you? Well, if you thought so, you wouldn't have said it so bluntly. Right. I don't think so. Well, what made Jonas think it? You asked him to set up an insurance trust for the benefit of your granddaughter, Susan. Apparently, the intent was to convey your entire estate to her over a period of two to three years. What's so crazy about that? Nothing at all, so far as that part of it was concerned. But it didn't stop there. After he got the proceedings started, you turned skittish on him, started to flutter. Well, Jonas is a fool. He is not a fool, and you know it. He's been your friend for 20 years... He's completely trustworthy, conscientious, and he has your best interests at heart. How much is he paying you to say things like that? Nobody is paying me but the Amicon Trust Company, and furthermore, you know it. 
All you're doing is trying to dodge the issue. Young man, I'm not accustomed to being talked to this way. Then you're going to look at it as a refreshingly novel experience. You sound like Susan. And an experience you don't entirely dislike. Presumptuous whelp. Maybe. Are you married, Mr. Dollar? No. What a pity I'm not 30 years younger. <laughs> what a pity I'm not 30 years older. Oh, thank you, sir. And now let's stop scratching each other's backs and get to the point. All right. Jonas is a fine man. No doubt he did have reason to get upset. These past months have been... Well, I suppose I haven't seemed like myself at all. Why is that? Oh, you're like a bulldog with a bone, Mr. Dollar. Careful how you talk about your might-have-been lover. What has been wrong these past months? Maybe I am losing my mind. Because actually, nothing has been wrong. I don't agree. I think something is wrong right now. Then why don't you tell me about it? All right, all right, I will. Apparently I'll have to if we ever expect to get anywhere. All right, some months ago you stopped going into town, stopped having visitors. Then you decided to get rid of your estate, turn it over to Susan. When your nephew, Walter, heard about it, he implied to Jonas Parks that you were losing your mind. Then you yourself started to back down on the idea. Why? Was Walter putting pressure on you? Not exactly. What were you scared of, Mrs. Gramley? It's got something to do with Walter and Hilda, right? Sit down. Almost a year ago, I discovered that the two of them were stealing me blind. Tampering with the ranch accounts, forging signatures, all sorts of ways. Why didn't you take it to Jonas or to the police? Because I didn't believe it at first. By the time I was absolutely sure, they'd cut the ground out from under me. So you tried to convey the property to Susan secretly? Yes. Until Walter learned what I was doing. Who's the push in that pair? Who's got the brain? Why, she has. Walter doesn't even have the gumption to get in out of the rain on his own. Uh -huh. Then she must have been the one who planned the auto accident. And he went along with it, of course. What auto accident? Three years ago, when your son and his wife were killed on the road to... Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Mrs. Gramley. I... I... I supposed you'd already guessed it. Guessed? What? That it was probably murder. lady, tired and lost, seeing herself surrounded by enemies, living in fear. But she at least knew one thing, that she wasn't alone now, that somebody else believed her and was on her side. Don't worry about her, Mr. Dollar. She'll be all right. Well, she had quite a shock, Susan. She had to know sometime. Oh, it's not a matter of no, exactly. It's, it's only suspicion. All right. You go to your church and I'll go to mine. But I know Walter and Hilda murder my parents. And I think you know it, too. Well, call it a real strong suspicion, then. So what are you going to do about it? What do you suggest I do about it? Advise my elders? I'm only a helpless young female. You're about as helpless as a mongoose with a cobra. Flattery? No, just a statement of fact. Say, look, what do you think they've been doing with the money they've cheated your grandmother out of? Oh, that's easy. Uncle Walter gambles. And gambles and gambles. And loses and loses? Uh-huh. He's not real bright, you know. Well, where does he do this? Different joints in Vegas? Oh, just one, mostly. A club called the Lead Balloon, and the name figures. Any special reason he hits that particular club? I think it's the only one that'll take his IOUs. The owner came out here to collect a couple of times. Happen to know his name? Sure, I got big ears. His name is Deuce McCoy. Deuce McCoy, the Lead Balloon. And the rest of the dough... Hilda. She's what's known as a luxury dame, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, so I gathered. I'll bet you gathered. All right, relax, will you? I'll send you out of the room. Yes, sir. Does she run around with other men? Oh, Mr. Dollar. All right, then. Do you happen to know any of them? Nope. I've managed not to, but it hasn't been easy. One or two, or does she play the field? I wouldn't know, but she's always getting gifts from somebody. Oh, she's a real cool operator, but, of course, you know that, since you've been one of her victims. How would you like to get spanked? I don't know. I've never been. But I can quote you all kinds of psychology about it. Take, for never instance... Never mind. Good night. Yeah? Your name McCoy? 
Deuce McCoy? Yeah, that's right. Johnny Dollar. I'd like to talk to you about a mutual acquaintance. What mutual acquaintance? Walter Greenley. He's across the room there at the moment, bucking one of your crap tables. Come on in, Dollar. Thanks. All right, now, what about Greenley? How much is he into you? Nobody gets into me. You've been taking his IOUs, haven't you? He buys them off. Holding any now? Look, look what, what's the pitch? Huh? What racket are you in? Insurance. What's that got to do with Gramley? Well, I don't think he's a very good risk. Mm-hmm. Meaning? He's probably going to be doing time for embezzlement before long. See, so why, why are you telling me about this? Well, I thought you might be interested, since you've been taking his IOUs. Oh, well, you big heart, is that it? You're just being neighborly? Uh, and... You might put it that way. Yeah, and I, I might not. Now, what, what is your angle? Is Gramley a personal friend of yours? No more than any other sucker out there at the tables. Then you wouldn't know where he gets the money he loses. Well, that I never ask. And I don't suppose you'd know his wife. Oh, he's married, is he? Hmm? Her name is Hilda. She likes gifts and brandy and money and excitement. Then I hope she manages to find him. Whoever she is. Oh, she does, one way or another. We all got our problems, Dollar. Yeah, but some of us more than the others, right, McCoy? Mm-hmm. You through speaking your piece now, huh? Not another word to say. Well, and I don't, I don't want to rush you, but... Yeah, hey, that's a nice cigarette case. Platinum, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't know. It's not yours? Somebody left it at the table. Somebody, huh? Then you don't know who it belongs to. If I did, I'd give it back. Then I'll save you some trouble, Mr. McCoy. I do know who it belongs to. What makes you think so? Because I saw it earlier today. It belongs to Hilda Grimley. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the pressure hits the top and the whole mess starts to crack. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.